Welcome to part three of the Bozak B302A series. In parts one and two, I opened this 1957 classic, removed the drivers, removed the crossover, tested and replaced the capacitors, explained how crossovers work, and tested the restored crossover. If you missed those episodes, you may want to go back and check them out. In this episode, I'll remove the old Kimsel insulation, strip and refinish the cabinet, wash the grill material, polish the logo badge, and restuff the speaker with new insulation, the crossover, and drivers. And I'll give you an audio demonstration of the final result. Let's start by removing the old Kimsel insulation. Now I'll remove the base from the speaker so I can repaint it. I couldn't access the head to one of the screws, so I'll just spin the base off. Okay, here it is. I don't want to hurt myself on that screw, so I'll just temporarily put some sturdy foam over it. Now let's remove the top panel. Uh, it's a little stuck. Uh, let me see if I can climb in and give it a push. The Bozak B302A gem was available in three finishes, walnut, mahogany, and birch. Ours appears to be walnut, and while it's not in terrible shape, there are a few blemishes, and instead of trying to fix those, it'll be easier to just refinish it. Notice that a Bozak worker used the inside of the top panel as a sketch pad, and all these years later, 23 plus 28 still equals 51. Imagine that. In addition to the bottom and top, there are also three trim pieces that go over the grill. Let's remove those now. Okay, here are the trim pieces, and here's how our speaker looks now. Now that all the finished wood pieces are removed, I want to see if I can clean up this grill fabric. To do that, I'll first remove the logo badge and see if scrubbing with a carpet cleaner doesn't do the trick. Okay, here's the before and after. The fabric is still damp here, but you can see that the carpet cleaner made a huge improvement. Now let's refinish the walnut top and trim pieces. Citrus strip usually works well for me to remove old finishes. Let's give it a try. After stripping, I used afterwash to remove the residue, and the results are fantastic. Before we sand the walnut down, though, let's let it dry and turn our attention now to the base. There are a few chips, so let's sand it down to the bare wood. Okay, looking good. We just need to use some wood fill to fix the chips, so I'll add some masking tape to help give us an edge. Here's the wood fill I'll use. Just spread it into place, and after half an hour, sand it down. Here's the base, ready for a new coat of Rust-Oleum semi-gloss in black. Let's do it. The walnut pieces have dried overnight, so let's do some quick repairs with wood fill and sand everything down with 220 grit. Notice that the wood fill does a great job, but doesn't exactly match the walnut. So to make sure there isn't a color shift when we lay down the stain, let's apply a coat of pre-stain. And now let's apply the stain. I'm using Minwax Dark Walnut. The trim pieces are done. Now let's do the top. First a coat of pre-stain. And now the Dark Walnut. Beautiful. To protect the finish, I'll apply three coats of spray-on lacquer. 
A quick buff with a scotch bright pad and a little Howard feed in wax. Finish things up to near perfection. Let's reinstall the base now. Now the top and the trim pieces. Okay, let's look inward now. Bozak wired the speaker in a quirky way by stapling the 18 gauge solid wire to the cabinet. To install the new acoustic insulation though, I need to remove the staples and temporarily lift the wiring away. So I'll use zip ties to keep the wires in place. All right. Whoops, I accidentally damaged the wires that go to the woofer, so I need to replace those. Okay, that's fixed. Let's remove the staples now. Good, time to install the new acoustic insulation. So far, I've showed you that the Bozax interior was lined with insulation, but haven't told you why. As you may know, stuffing speaker interiors with insulation is common practice even today. For good sound, it really is a necessity. That's because the interior of a speaker cabinet is like a little room. And just as with rooms, reflected sounds from the ceiling, walls, and floor interfere with the primary sounds. We hear these reflections not only as echoes, but as dips and peaks in frequencies as the reflected waves sometimes reinforce and sometimes cancel each other. By applying acoustically absorbent material to ceilings, walls, and floors, some of these reflections are absorbed and they cause less interference. This is why rooms sound so much better with furniture, curtains, and carpet than when empty. The same holds for the little room in your speaker, and that's why insulation is used. You may wonder why the sound of a speaker's interior is important since we listen from the outside. Well, with ported speakers, you very much are hearing the interior of the speaker, and with sealed boxes, the interior dramatically affects the way the woofer cone moves. Our Bozak uses an infinite baffle design, which requires a big cabinet to keep interior sound waves from reflecting back to the speaker cones. Adding insulation to an infinite baffles enclosure, in effect, makes the interior appear even larger to the cones. This Bozak speaker also uses another trick to dampen low frequency waves, but we'll get into that later. Some of you suggested I keep the original Kimsel insulation, but that just wasn't practical as the old paper was deteriorating and just too fragile. Fiberglass would have made a suitable replacement, but I decided to ditch the itch and order some 2-inch thick cotton bats from ATS Acoustics. The stuff is eco-friendly and I believe made mostly from recycled denim. You may recall it's similar to what Ohm provided for the Walsh 2 upgrade I did. I'll leave a link to that series in the description if you want to see how that turned out. Let's install the bottom piece first, and over that the crossover, now the remaining pieces, and I'll staple everything in place. Let's solder the wires to the crossover and reinstall the drivers. Now I'm going to place some masking tape over the woofer and mid-range to protect the cones when I resolder the wires. Looks good, almost done, but we still need to hang the curtain. No, not that curtain, this curtain. I told you the Bozak had an extra trick to dampen low frequency waves, and this is it. An insulation curtain that hangs down the middle of the cabinet to absorb the back waves from the woofer. To work correctly, the curtain needs to hang freely and not touch the sides or the bottom of the cabinet. I've cut a piece of insulation to size. Let's hang our curtain. Perfect. There's also a piece of insulation that attaches to the interior of the back panel. Let's remove the old Kimsel and double check the polarity of the panel's terminals. Just as I suspected, someone put a red dot on the negative side. Let's fix that. And let's also protect the panel's paper spec and warranty sheets with some laminate. Nice. Let's attach the new piece of insulation, put the back panel in place, and solder the terminal wires to the crossover. Almost done. Just need to lift the back panel into position and secure it with the 18 wood screws. Oh wait, I forgot the logo badge. Let's polish it up with some Simichrome. That's a lot better. Let's install the badge on the front grill. Here's the Bozak's new home. An isolation platform goes on top and now old blue. Looks good, but will they make beautiful music together? Have a listen and you tell me in the comments. Enjoy.
To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.